Hi guys, welcome to MS Power Ultimate. In today's video, we will learn how to perform text manipulation by extracting data from PDF invoice. For I would like to show you an example. So I have five different sets of PDF form. Both of all of them are has the same format. So let me open them. Okay, so uh, all of these invoices contains the same information. So what we're going to extract is the item quantity unit cost amount. So um, this we call this as the table items, whereas this information here and invoice, due date, date, balance, and bill to is considered as the general information. Okay, we're going to continue on the part two. Okay, so for part two, let me save this. I'm going to create another subflow. Called extract underscore table items. Okay, so from here, if you take a look here, right, there's a pattern to it where uh, after we find this item quantity unit cost amount, then it will come a table here. All the table items we found here, and it's in between the item and the subtotal, right? So we want to do a split of the text where we can only ensure that we have these sets of record. Okay, and then after we get these sets of record, right, we can take a look at it that hey, this pattern will always be okay, there's an item quantity item, quantity, unit cost, and amount, right? So this amount there is no space. There, there is, there is no space in between this value. But this space is to determine that it is a different set of column, right? So this will be the unit cost, and this one will be the quantity. Whereas for the item, it can have mark 8, mark 9, and many more characters over here. So we can do the extraction by this last index is the amount, second last index is the unit cost, and the third last index is the quantity, and the fourth last index all the way to the first index will be the item name okay so first of all i'm going to write a comment here so that we won't confuse ourselves i add a finding the first item index okay what i mean by this is trying to find this first item index okay so i would like to use a set variable and I declare an item index and I set the value to 0 ok and then I will use a for each row again for each loop I loop the text list and then the variable produce will be current item and I can see Okay, so in this case, right, um, we need to do this if current item contains item, which means after we find this value, and then we put a break. So what I'm trying to do here is I try to get um, the index of this item, right? So from here I already set a variable. If this one is if if it, the current item contains item, I'm gonna exit the loop. Okay, but after before that, right? We also need to have this increase variable. Because I want to increment this index item, item index, sorry, item index by one. So each time it look, this will be in item index zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, so let me go back to my main. I run another subflow again. And I call the table items. 
So we know that this one is perfectly working fine. We are going to disable this action and I'm going to run this. So we take a look at the output. Okay, so the item index is at 14. Alright, so this is the first step which we already done. Then now we want to delete the this index zero all the way until 14. So how can we do that? Is we just use a loop. And then we start from zero item to I mean end to item index. We increment by one. Okay, so from here we're going to use a remove item from list. We will we're gonna remove all the records from zero index. So when this is removed, it becomes this. And then if this is removed, it becomes this, and then it will continue until 14 times. Okay, so from this text list. And then I'm gonna add a comment here. So if I to run this right okay we take a look over here we have all the sets of item here right we have marked it AC until X1050, but we have additional records here, which is the subtotal over here. But we actually, we have already ensured that we got all these five items. Okay, so we're going to remove all this index. So what we can we do here is, uh, we find the index that contains the subtotal. We put a comment first. Find the index. Okay, I'm gonna do the same step here. Copy this. I'm gonna reset the variable back to zero. Put it here. Okay, I drag this above. If item contains subtotal. And then I'm going to break, exit the loop. Okay, so now we're going to delete the items from here starting from the last index. Now we already know that, uh, we already know the index of this subtotal, right? So that means we already know that, uh, the total number of this, this. So what we're going to do next is, I drag this below, okay, and I put it as delete the remaining items after subtotal by deleting from the last index. So here, we're going to use a loop condition. Well, this text list dot count, which means the total amount of this list is more than the item index, item index. If this is more, we're going to delete the item from the list from starting from the last item. So we use a remove from list. And the index will be this one. I use text list. 
but that index I will change it as y minus 1 because remember a list it will always start from 0 so yes that's the reason why we minus 1 okay so if I close this right I mean I save this and I run it then you'll be able to see that the text list will only have the the sets of I table items record Okay, let me open it. Great, we already have all the table items. So now the next step, this is where we're going to extract all the information. We use the for each. Item in the text list. Variable produce will be current item. Click save. And then I'm going to split the text based on space. Okay, so let me get split text. Current item dot clean by a space, and then I call this as item details. Save and then, of course, I need to declare an empty variable to give the item name. Okay, item and I set this to declare an empty string to just do it this way. Okay, and I click save, it will be an empty string. Alright, so now, what's the next step is that we're going to look, uh, we're going to set the variable for amount, unit cost, and quantity first. The item we do it last. Okay, so we, we're going to use a set variable again. Set variable here, I declare it as quantity. And I use item details because we know the index, right? We can do it this way item details dot count minus one. This is basically the last index of this item because if you, let's say if we have multiple space here, right? One, two, mark 18, mark 20. So actually, this is the item name. So this the, the index may is dynamic. It won't be always it won't it won't be always a, a four index of four or five and so forth. Okay. So what we're going to do is after we do all the split text by a space, we get the last index. So the last index here is one, right? And then click save. We repeat this for unit cost and amount. Okay, this will be quantity will be minus three and then unit cost minus two among will be minus one. Okay, so let's try to run this. Okay, so we got the amount, we got the quantity, 
we got the unit cost. Okay, so let's double check. This is the last last index value, right? So we got it right. Okay, so now we're going to to uh to do a string manipulation where we're going to keep on appending for any for each of these space in between uh this the last three index here. It's gonna be the item name. So from here, right, we use another loop. I need to use a normal loop. Okay. I use a normal loop here. I want to loop from zero until the item index dot count minus four increment by one. Why minus four? Zero. Hey, sorry, this is minus one, minus two, minus three, and minus four. We'll be starting from this onwards. Okay. So the index from zero until the last index of this minus four will be the item name. So I'm gonna set a variable here, right? I'm gonna name it as item dot string. So I'm not sure. And a space here because we're going to append the item. Item details bracket loop index dot trim. So why am I doing this? So this one is basically we going uh if I were to just use this one set item variable to over here, that means this value will be keep on overwriting non stop. But I want I want it to keep on appending on the same set of variables. So for example, I already get this value mark. Then the next time if I look again, then I get this value and I append it. So now over here, let me check what went wrong here. Okay, so I use this one. Okay, I click save. If I were to run this right, You see the item here, we are actually getting the correct value. So the last item is x1050, quantity 7 and so forth. Okay, so now what we're going to do next, this is where, this what we're we going to do with the with this sets of information, right? We're going to write all this information into Excel. 